Hi there, folks. Simon here with another 7x7 Chandrian Tank Invitational Tournament match, this time between No Hat Coder and Arch Venison. No Hat Coder is the reigning champion of Chandrian tournaments. He won first place in the 7x7 tournament last year. However, he did have to go to Blitz playoff matches with Abyss in order to get that title. Now, we will be seeing him facing off versus Arch Venison, the initiator of this whole tournament, the guy who came up with it and got things running and is running the tournament, Arch Venison. Currently ranked number nine on Playtac versus No Hat Coder, who I believe is currently ranked number two on Playtac with Guelja jumping up there. And so we are good to go, ready to watch this match. Again, this is a one game match. Just gonna be playing the one game with two Komi. Now this is played with 15 minutes on the clock, 20 second increment, two Komi, and this is one game. And again, they do have two capstones because it is seven by seven. So we are good to go. Let's get started with this Chandrian Invitational Tech Tournament game. And we get the first move played up at A7. And then G7, adjacent corners here. Will White jump straight to the center? No, going to play this sort of slightly off-center. Not quite the Knights opening that we see in 6x6, but it's a different opening here from No Hat Coder. This is interesting. I'm sure Archie's probably thinking about playing right here at D4 anyway, as that does give him that center square, which is so strong. But instead, he's going to be playing this sort of offset mirrored opening. Dropping that first capstone early, right on D4. Ready to come across and interrupt this vertical line that White has building. That capstone seems to have thrown No Hat for a bit of a loop here. And we'll see how he decides to respond to that. Going to be playing up above. I'm assuming Black is going to play again here at D6. Following that typical pattern that we see with that mirrored opening. Although it is slightly different because he has played that capstone. All right, now playing offset here at F3 is a little interesting and something that I hadn't expected. I understand though, because he's still going for that vertical line here and this played off the side allows him to kind of go around where this capstone can capture over. However, now black does have momentum and can start building for that. Uh, white is, uh, but black instead doesn't go for the momentum, goes straight across over here, forcing white to have to make some sort of concession and not be able to do what he's been going for without creating more liabilities. All right, now white building down below at F1. That's making that anchor point on the bottom row there. Playing now at G4 with black. Now white not making attack threat, but he will be able to make one on the following turn by placing either here at E2, here at D3, or here at F5. Black decides to play at F5 first, keep white from doing that. I imagine white might play here at D3 or here at E2. But could decide to go something else. Nope, gonna make that threat, force Black to make some sort of capture. Black's gonna come over with that capstone, making sure not to make any flat on flat captures to create liabilities later on. White now placing off here to the side to keep Black from going for that vertical line, but Black's totally content to go for that horizontal now. White. Going to be maybe shifting gears for the horizontal themselves. This is a tricky position now for white. I'd say black has a pretty solid position. White has a pretty solid position. Ooh, white dropping that second capstone early here at C6, ready to come down and interrupt all that horizontal line that black's been building toward. I think we may see a B6 placement or potentially an A5, but I like B6. It wouldn't be the tack threat that A5 would be, 
but b6 would allow black to kind of go for this direction. Okay, makes the capture instead. White comes down with the capstone. Black now building around the white capstone, ready to keep continuing on for that horizontal threat. White now has a couple decisions here to make. Could decide to drop maybe a wall over here to cut off Black's horizontal line. Could decide to move towards their own vertical threat, placing up here at d7. Instead, they decide to play down at d2, which goes for the vertical and horizontal threat at the same time. That's not a bad decision. I can see that going well. Although the d7 is going to be instrumental here. This is a horizontal threat now. Black playing at b6 was the threat, but instead white brings that capstone over, cuts black off from that spot. Black may want to play up here at b7 or a6 to make that connection. Instead, going to bring the capstone up. Not attack threat here for black. It's important to note. Not attack threat. White could decide to continue playing down off to the side here, going for that horizontal, counting on this capstone to come up and interrupt that horizontal threat. Although if this capstone does come up to d6, it is pretty likely that black drops their own second capstone here at d5. White now dropping the wall here, ready to come down onto d6 to cut black off. Smart play here. Black now switching gears, going for that horizontal line, uh, or going for that vertical line, sorry. White now content to build for the horizontal line themselves. Probably going to see a b2 here now. Not attack threat for white, but there is one on the next turn, unless black plays here at e2, a2. Nope, black going to drop that second capstone here. Ready to come down or across onto D3. Coming across onto D3 would be working towards that horizontal line. Coming down onto C2 would cut off white's horizontal and also work towards the vertical of black. White's two capstones are up here, away from this bottom half of the board where all this action is currently going on. White makes the tag threat by placing here at G1. Interesting play. To play there instead of over at a2. I wonder what the logic behind that was. We may be seeing a c1 or b1 placement here pretty soon. White bringing that wall down. That's a smart play here. So white brings the wall down. Black can't smash it. They would lose to a road. White can, however, bring that wall over to the left onto b6, cutting that off. Black now not making a threat, but threatening to capture onto b2 to create that vertical tack thread. White dropping yet another wall here on c4. That is going to be a risky play that may come back to bite them later on in this game. As, again, this is a two Comey game. That means two points or two flat count gets added to black score at the end of the game if it does not end in a road. Now we see black filling in here at C3. Again, not attack threat, but it is threatening one on the next turn. White playing up here now at D7. Potentially going to be making a smash onto D6 to make that threat in the vertical direction. How would black stop that? Black would stop that likely with this capstone moving over, potentially with, with these flats as well, coming over right here onto D3. So not setting up for a tenue play, but setting up for a strong threat. Black now created that threat by placing down here, uh, sorry, yeah, by placing down here at C1, and then this wall immediately comes over, cutting that off. Black building towards that same threat, playing now at C4. This, not attack threat for black. White can make that smash move. That's what they wanted to do here. Smash now onto d6, create that attack threat, force black to make some other move to, to defend.
No, instead we're going to see white just play a flat here at c5. Black could renew that attack threat, placing up here at a6 or at b7. That would be attack threat by bringing this down onto c5 or bringing b5 to the right. So making that connection here would renew that threat and exactly what happens here. Place it b7 and then white brings that capstone from d4 over here onto c4, cutting off any hope of a vertical threat in these two lines. Black's going to have to go around this wall, a3, a4, a5, in order to get that. And that's three turns to get there. White, in the meantime, can play here at d4 and then do some work to, to build for that. Uh, either horizontal or vertical threat, playing up here at a5, making that connection. Um, there's plenty of room to go in both directions for white right now. They've got these two anchor points, able to build vertically and horizontally. Guel just saying he likes a wall at d4 for black. Black doesn't go for that, instead builds a flat at e4. e4 going for that horizontal line now. White builds then at d4, solidifying that connection. No tap threat here for black, but this works pretty well. All right, a4 plays to block black from going for that also, potentially, to build for that horizontal threat of their own. Black building up at a5, trying to make that connection here. White's not able to smash this. That would lead to a loss, uh, a road being captured over or captured down here onto this c5 position would give black a road. The, uh, the My dog really did not like that move, I guess. He was barking a little bit about it, but you know, I think he's calmed down. He, he's, he's okay with this current position. He's just a little worried, I'd say, for each player. I'd say this is a pretty even matchup right now in terms of position on the board. They're both making a lot of headway towards multiple threats. Uh, black may have a slight advantage right now. Um, white currently going for a number of different threats, but I think black's closer. And also, as Guelja notes, black currently has the flat advantage by four. And that is including the two Komi that black gets in this game granted we are a bit away from ending this in terms of running out of reserves uh, white decides to go for moving this 2b4 wall stack up to b5 2b4 plus that is portable tack notation or ptn if you're not familiar with ptn you can check out the video in tack university called portable tack notation or ptn Now this is also a tack threat for white. Placing at b4 would be a road. A road all the way from here, g2, snaking up to b4. All right, black comes right. That cuts off that tack threat and also creates a tack threat of their own. Capturing up onto d3 here would be a road. So now white has to defend against this particular threat, and they could do that by renewing their own threat, maybe coming over here with f3 left, would renew the threat and also cut off blacks, but instead they come down with the capstone to cut off black's horizontal threat there. Black may decide to play over here, maybe at c4 or at b4, continue on in that direction. But right now, the game has been pushed around quite a bit. All right, the B4 has been filled in. So we're seeing this as a continuation of the vertical threat and the horizontal threat. You can do a number of things here. If he places at C4 on the next turn, 
he will be able to toss this capstone all the way up here onto d4 for the road. So white may want to fill in here at c4 to stop that. However, now that he's filled in here, black may want to do something on this side, maybe make a capture over, maybe place at a six. One of those things I think uh, is what wants to happen. All right, he decides to play here at a2, building again for that vertical line. Let's see. No threat right now from white. No threat from black. I don't think white can make attack threat on, oh yeah, they, uh, no, they can't make one on this turn. And we take a look over here at the clock, we're seeing 17 and a half minutes versus basically 17 and a half minutes. Both players playing very, very quickly in this early game, 30 turns in and they're way above that starting time of 15 minutes on the clock. They're taking their time in the early game so they can have more time to process these more difficult moves later on in the game, wherein the board is a little bit crazier. And I think that we're getting right to that point where the board's getting pretty dang crazy. Why not playing here at C2, trying to maybe cut off black from building a cross here with the capstone potentially. Um, I'm not really seeing the reason for the play at C2 right now, but uh, maybe we'll get a little more insight on that later. Black now playing down at A1, making that vertical line. Again, not attack threat, not yet. Playing at A6 would be attack threat, or doing uh, before left would be attack threat. Either of those would work. Um, could. White cannot smash this because that would leave a horizontal line for black or a vertical line, depending on how he does it. If he spreads out one, 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 then it's a horizontal. If he does two, one, then it's a vertical. Black going for horizontal at the bottom of the board, yeah. Playing a D1 here pretty soon, also going for the vertical. Black's in, I'd say, a better position at this point. White now coming down with that wall. And that may be so that white can come over and smash here onto B5. I think that's what we're going to see. We're going to see... Uh, a smash on on b5 with this wall um if black fills in at d6 like well just saying here uh i don't think that does too much for him see i think i think that smash looks good to me now that that wall's come down black making the tack threat placing now at a6, that's a, that's a threat. Now the smash can't happen until that does. Now that stopped that threat. Moving a4 plus keeps b4 from coming over here onto a4 and making that road. Now we've got this little stack here. One of the only liabilities available not covered in a wall right now, which is fascinating. They've done a lot of wall captures and capstone captures, but really no flat on flat captures until that. Now, black probably wants to prevent the smash here.
Hmm. How would he do that, though? That's the question. He goes for placing, filling in here at d6. White moves the capstone up to prevent a smash here, probably. Also to open this up for a vertical road by filling in here at d5 on the next turn. Black could answer this by filling in with a flat or a wall here at d5. A flat wouldn't be too productive because white could come over with c5 to make that vertical threat. Black plays at d1 here, going for the horizontal line along the bottom. No tack threat here. Not that I can see, at least. But, hmm. Now, why not play at d5 for white? White playing at d5 is good. I think. Unless there's some sneaky trap I'm not seeing. Plays at d5. This is attack threat for white now. Capturing over with f3 to the left or capturing up with e2 plus would be a road in the vertical direction. How will black respond to this? Black could do 3d2 right here, which would be which would cut that off and create a tack threat that white has to stop making some sort of capture. So yeah, I think that black probably wants to do 3d2 right. Maybe. Hmm. It would force a capture probably with maybe, maybe down here or here with white, which would create another road threat for white. Oh man, that's hard to look forward. No, black comes up. Okay, I see that. So black comes up, stops that vertical threat, also threatening B5 with the capstone for the vertical threat for black. That's a fun move. I did not see that one coming at all. All right, I like this position here for black. Black wants to smash here. White definitely doesn't want that smash to occur, as that would lead to a road for black. So black, white's going to have to come up with something to stop that threat. 
while also not losing position here on the board. That was a fun move. I like that, and I completely did not see that. Wall could move upwards. Uh, probably not down. I feel like the wall moving down might not be great, but moving up works. No, mm, down might be good too. Hmm. What's the play here from No Hat? If the wall moves up, A4 wouldn't be a threat because the capstone doesn't reach all the way. Wall moves down here. Um, A4 still wouldn't be another threat. Capstone doesn't reach all the way over there. Black may decide to throw this capstone anyway to want to make that smash. Actually, no. No, not going to do that. White probably wants to play here at d2 at some point but black playing here at d2 would be attack threat for black right yeah it would throwing this capstone down onto d3 would make that horizontal line um let's see Let's see, let's see. Yeah, this would be attack threat, but white just comes down with the single flat onto d2, and that ruins it and also creates their own horizontal attack threat. Hmm. What is the move here for black? Black's also in a position here to use this white stack to move right and make up some flat count differential. Black decides to play it safe, come down, capture those, keep white from making that plus four move, but now he can chase this wall and smash that at B4. Um, white can stop him from smashing just by placing here at D2 or by placing here at B5. Either of those would keep black from smashing that wall. So placing at b5, I'd say, is probably the best choice. I like that one. Yeah, placing at b5 stops the smash, creates attack threat. Nope. going to move down with that. Looks like making a plus two move, but also creating the attack threat at the same time. Hmm. A dual attack threat. Placing here at b5 or placing here at d5 would be a road. So black needs to stop that by capturing here at c4 or by capturing at c2. Either of those. Either of those would, would stop it. So black could come left onto c4 to cut off both threats. And then or could come up with this flat onto c2, but then b2 would just come right. So yeah, I'd say moving this capstone here onto c4 is basically the only move black has right now. And it is easy to miss the vertical threat here. 
it's it's easy to just see this horizontal as that's more it's easier to see because this capstone capstone blindness is a real thing but yeah I'd, I'd say yep and that's what he does black comes over with the capstone onto c4 capturing that maintaining his ability to smash this wall if ever there comes a chance for that i mean he can't do it at the moment because that would lead to a road for white um white can white can play here at d5 now i like white playing at d5 because nope they're gonna go for b5 instead d5 i liked because it built toward a vertical line here and also for the horizontal along this way Uh, Gwelja in the chat saying that black is up by two flats on the flat count. I'm going to trust his counting there. But yeah, I really liked D5 there instead of B5 because it worked for, for this horizontal and also for this vertical. Um, B5 just works for this horizontal and pins this capstone from smashing. Um, let's see. White's got some pretty solid positions here. Playing an A4, uh, not a tack threat for black, but let's say white plays here at D5 now for the tack threat, placing at F7. Now black just comes up with A4, makes their own tack threat, and cuts off white's ability to pin the capstone uh, for smashing. No, actually doesn't do that because smashing would still lead to a vertical line. So yes, um, hmm, let's see. How will he defend when A6 or A4 goes? I think... I think playing at d5 might work. Maybe. Oh, it's tough to say. Morton's saying he thinks Arch has forgotten he's got Comey. I don't know about that. I think Arch is focusing on trying to win with a road and he's still up on Comey and so I think he was paying attention to that when he made this capture previously I think it was here yeah when he made this move on 36 I think that had Comey in mind because he didn't want to make want to see that uh plus three move with those flats and he was cutting off this threat I think that was what he was what he had in mind it was was the Comey and keeping track of flat guy differential making sure he stayed ahead. White playing here at d5. This is attack threat in the horizontal direction. Playing at f7 would be a road. Black now likely going to make a capture here onto a5. They will win a capture war because white only has this one flat to come over and recapture. And they will need to recapture uh, or do something else along the line. But I believe recapture is basically the only thing they can do at this point um, in order to stop that road from occurring may end in a wall being dropped from white but white can still go for this vertical line here playing here at d4 next let's see Black could, instead of capturing on a5, could decide to move this capstone stack up to c5. That would threaten along this a line for the vertical threat and also cut off white's horizontal, but I don't think that's nearly as good as capturing here onto a5. Nope, oh, he goes for it though. Now we see the tack threat. Will we see? 
Will we see white move this a5 stack down? I think 2a5 minus makes a lot of sense here. That's what he does. How will black respond? Black may want to drop a flat here on the next turn, maybe playing one here at d4 to keep this white vertical threat from getting too far along. Because so white wants to play at d4. This is also attack threat for white. I didn't even see that. Bringing this stack from a4 down onto a2 is a road. So black has to respond to that. So he can't play here at d4. So yeah, a4 coming down to a2 is a threat. I didn't even see that. I've been looking at this for a while and thinking, oh, it's too bad that's so short and it can't reach. Now it can reach. <laughs> I'm sure black is aware of that. Black does make that recapture. White captures it with the stack. So now we get the wall on top here. That is something that black wishes they could snag with that capstone, that's for sure. How many do we have in the stack? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in this stack. Black captures over onto a onto B2 with A2. Not attack threat, but they probably want to play here at B4 soon. That was still attack threat. White now plays at d4, making that uh, that vertical attack threat. Black was leading this, but now white, I'd say, is strongly in the lead. We may see... A d3 played from white. That would work very well. Uh, wouldn't be attack threat here, but it would be a strong play, I'd say. Because this wall stack can come way to the right onto d4 to capture and maybe do something about going left or right for the threat. Leaving behind a bunch, sure, but I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it or not. But yeah, currently not attack threat, I'm pretty sure. Apparently black still has uh, 16, 13 in terms of flat count. So still up on flats with that, that Comey helping him out a little bit. Well, just saying a wall here at E4 might be a good way to go. Yeah, I can see that. So it threatens to capture over. We saw white play here at c4 instead of c3, ready to capture right. Black now makes the threat. Will white 
come over with the wall. I think white could bring this stack over onto b4. No, brings the capstone over. Interesting. That gives up this semi pin, that, that pin that he had on this capstone. Currently 16 to 14 in terms of flats in favor of black. White now drops a wall here at d3, ready to cut off basically every angle that white's been building toward. White could bring this whole stack over onto c3 and then smash on d3, which would be attack threat in the vertical direction. Easily stopped though. Easily stopped would also not be giving up a, a road to black, which is something you gotta watch out for. White instead playing at C3, making the horizontal threat. Playing at B3 would be a road, or A3, sorry, A3 would be a road or sliding this wall stack down, also be a road. Hmm. Black comes over with the wall. Very interesting. White may decide to come down onto B2, which would be great for flat count differential moves. Flat count differential, if you're unfamiliar, is talked about in the flat count differential or FCD video of TAC University. So white won't be able to smash that C3 wall, but coming down onto B2 would be fine. Uh, playing at d3 first might be better. Yeah, it does go for the d3 placement. This is attack threat for white. c4 right would be a vertical road. Black's got to stop that threat. Hmm. What will occur? Well, just thinking maybe that capstone here on C5 is going to come over here onto D5. Nope, going to come down. All right. White could potentially play here. Could come down with the capstone. I think an E4 placement for white is attack threat, but easily stopped with an E3 plus. Or it would give black an excuse to bring this capstone down all the way to E4 to cut that off and kind of get this second capstone back in the game. So he does go for the E4 placement at, uh, there for no hat. Now, E3 plus. Huh. 
brings that that capstone down that I was looking at before. Black still unable to smash this stack as it would lead to white building a vertical road there. Now, white could decide to hmm, maybe play at a two for a threat, maybe come down with this capstone for a threat. Yeah, it comes down with a capstone, and I think that's a smart play here. However, if this wall comes down, white won't be able to smash it. They can build fill in at C3, though. Do do that. Will will we see a C three placement for white? So fifteen currently for black. Fourteen for white. White has one plus two move and one other plus two move, so they can come ahead in terms of flats the way the game currently stands. Black really wants to smash this stack, but they can't do that without giving up a road. As soon as they're able, I'm sure they're gonna go for that though. White can't smash this, because that would lead to a road for black in a vertical. White decides to toss that capstone upward to both block this capstone, I guess, even though it wasn't really in any danger and to work towards that horizontal again. But I don't think this, it wasn't really in any danger of being smashed. Any smash that happened on this would leave a vertical road for white. So I don't really see what the need for that move was. Although black now can't smash on C2 because that would give white a road. I don't know why black might want the C2 here though. What is the play here for black? I'd say white has the better position, but black is up in terms of flat count. Although, I'm pretty sure they are. One, two, three. No, white's up in terms of flat count now. So white is up in flats and in positioning. Black is going to have to be playing a tough game here to come back. However, black now down below five minutes on the clock. No hat just below 10. So Arch Venison taking a little bit more time here in this end game than no hat. All right, white or black filling in here at C5. Okay. Why? Now white plays here at C3 to come up on flats and create a tack threat. Right, C3, I don't think there's anything 
to that C5 placement. I'm not really sure why, what the C5 was, but I don't really know what else Black could have done besides play it here at C3. Uh, maybe come over with this wall stack and threaten the liability here on D1. I think he's going to want to threaten the liability on, on D1 here pretty soon with this wall stack because he needs to make up some flat count score. Uh, White does decide to fill in here at C3, goes for that horizontal threat. Now will we see black move right with this wall? If it does move right with the wall, we may see white just play at A3. Oh, yeah, I didn't even, wait. Yeah, okay, C5 here was played to keep white from building for this vertical threat and also for this other horizontal up above. But I think the C3 was more imminent. It makes sense that C3 was way more imminent. But now black may decide to bring this wall to the right here onto D2. No, they bring over the flat onto D3, which cuts off white's vertical line and the horizontal that white was going for. Okay, that makes sense. I can see that. Maybe they're freeing up different spots to make uh, other moves, like maybe black wants to smash at C6. And black smashing at C6 would give him attack threat. And prior to that, he wouldn't have been able to do that. So yeah, that makes sense. I can see that. I think maybe he's going for that, for the C4 smashing up to C6. Uh, white fills in here at A5. Not attack threat. Is it? Is it attack threat? Ah, yeah, the capstone on D6 coming all the way down to D3. That's very sneaky. That is a sneaky threat there. Really well done. Black sees it, moves over. Wow, great spotting. I did not spot that. I only saw it because of the chat there. Well done, Arch Venison, for spotting that sneaky threat, bringing this D6 capstone all the way down onto D3. That was a sneaky threat. Sneaky, sneaky. Hmm. What's the play here from white now? Dropping a wall, ready to come left or up in order to, to interrupt things and to liberate those captives. Great position for a wall, I'd say. That is, that is brutal for black. White's able to get some liabilities back no matter which direction they go. And now, because A5 was placed, black can't smash on C6, because that would leave a road there for white. Yeah, this, uh, this, this isn't looking good for black anymore. It was looking good for black for a while, but now black is having a really tough time of it. All right, black playing up here at F7, just trying to... Hold off whatever he can, I guess, at this point. Ooh. Very interesting. What is the play going to be here?
don't really know what he's doing. with f7 I mean blocking this horizontal but the horizontal wasn't really a threat because of c5 hmm white now plays at e3 But why? Just to run down reserves, maybe? Looks like white has one or two fewer reserves than black. Sixteen for white. Sixteen for black, including the Comey. Sixteen, sixteen in flats. Yeah, it looks like E3 was played to pin the capstone on E4 because capstone moves left or right. It is a road for white. And it helps run down white's reserves. This is a tough one. Hmm. What is the play? And I don't know. Archie's down to about a minute on the clock here. Decides to go for the self-smash. A play of desperation. And this is attack threat for black. And I don't think it's a it's a loss for white or for, for black. Um what is white's play here? Are they going to move this wall up onto d4? I've been looking at that move for a while, and I think now was the time to make it. White now has to make some sort of defense to stop him from making that road. And... Black can then make some really strong positive flak hunt differential moves on the next turn. Um... White could just decide to go c4 right. which would cut off the horizontal threat from black and also set up a stronger position there. Black wouldn't be able to come left with this capstone. This capstone would have to come down again, um, though black would have the ability to retake some, some captives and, and get a, uh, a better flat count score here. Oh, instead he moves the whole stack over. That's interesting. The whole stack comes right. Wow. 
I think white wants to bring this capstone to the right on top of d4 for a hard capstone. I think that's what he's looking at here. All right, 46 minus, oh my goodness, too much is happening too fast. Hold on, let's go back. That happens, black brings that down, white brings the capstone to the left to stop the tack threat, and then, wait, black brings that over to the left. Let's see, this C5 stack here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tall. So yes, that can go right, but now there's no connection. Oh my goodness. What's the flat count here now? White comes over with this stack. Uh, that's a tack threat now. This is a horizontal tack threat. Spreading this to the right would be a road, the horizontal direction. Black needs to defend that. I can't imagine black is anywhere close to the flat count of white right now. A 13 for black. I think 16 for white. Uh, maybe placing a wall here on D3 would be a good way to stop that. No, he missed it. He missed the threat. Black plays at E4. Didn't see the drawbridge threat here from white. White spreads over with that wall stack, creates a road, and ends the game. Well done. That was very, very well played uh, by both players. Arch Venison down to a minute on the board. Uh, less than a minute on the board at some point. So really, really well played to both players. Uh, congratulations to Nohat Kodoran winning that game. That was a phenomenal match. We saw some, some great moves. Some questionable moves, but mostly great moves. I think we only saw a few that we were shaking our heads at, but uh, they proved to be strong later on. Great, great play from both players. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. Be sure to check out the description below for all things TAC, especially the TAC Discord server, which is where you can find all sorts of resources and people to play with online, whether it be on playtac.com right here or through the Discord itself, playing asynchronously, taking just a few minutes a day to make your move. So... Again, thanks everybody for watching, and until next time, have a great day, and happy tacking.